Welcome back Drink Stuff fans and welcome to November's Cocktail Club and I can proudly present this is this month's flavour, Mon and Lafree Red Berries. So coming up in this video, I'm going to just quickly talk to you about that very quickly, but now I've got my first five, what I would call classic famous recipes uh, where you can kind of riff that into them. So that's what's coming up in these in this video. As always, the, the Cocktail Club, the Drink Stuff Cocktail Club, we pick a flavour of the month. Uh, Basically, we're focusing on Monin's Le Fouise. They're purees. They're at least 50% fruit and then 50% sugar. Uh, I'll kind of talk to you a little bit in a second about the difference between those and these and why you would use them. But as always, get involved in the Cocktail Club. There'll be a link in the comments below and in the description. Click the link. You send us your email address. We send you a cocktail book by return. But the whole point is we then send you information of how you can get involved. The big deal is uh, you could win a flavour of your choice at the end of the month by submitting your own recipes to our Discord or tag us on Instagram, uh, either or or Facebook, although I don't log into Facebook, I'll never see those. Uh, but Instagram or Discord, I will I will see. So get involved, submit your cocktail recipes using this. We make them up at the end of the month and the winner gets to choose one of these. But if you're a member, and it's free, if you're a member of the Cocktail Club, you can, there's a discount code to get these discounted. Get these cheaper. Why would you not be involved? So quickly diving into what these actually are then specifically. If it's the first time you're tuning into this, if you've never found them before, there's a big difference between Monin syrups and, in general, cocktail syrups. ODK, William Fox, they're the other two brands we sell. Uh, there's a big difference between them and Monin Le Free. Monin Le Free are similar to the ODK stuff there. Now, difference. Let's talk a couple of things here first. The content of this, the fruit content, is a lot, lot higher than what these are. 50, I think it's 50.1%, so it's always more fruit than sugar, even though it's like 0.1%. So it needs actual fruit content in there. That's obviously blended together with sugar and that gives it the preservative, the shelf life. Now, unopened shelf life. Uh, this is being filmed in mid-October. We've had this for at least a month, 2020. The use by on it is 0224. So you are talking 18 months from the time Monin actually produced it. Obviously, suppliers are going to have hold stock for longer and some suppliers hold more stock. So, you know, shelf life's there, but it's 18 months essentially from production. Now, they do sort of say on here four to six weeks after opening. This is me. This is my caveat. This is not Monin. This is me. This is Steve DeBarman. I know full well that you can keep these as long as they're not in direct sunlight, as long as they're not sitting on top of the radiator. I know full well that these, I've got, I can hand on heart say these is good six months at the moment. Or right? I've got a sneaky suspicion they will go a lot longer. All right. But I can, I can kind of vouch for the fact that they will last a good six months over after opening, as long as you're, they're in a cool, not the fridge, they don't need to go in the fridge, but. Um, you know, just keep them in a cool place. Don't come at me if they go off within six months because Monin do say use within four to six weeks, but I've got a few at home. I'm testing. Mine are, mine are still good after six months. So why would you use one of these over kind of a syrup? Well, basically it's flavour and consistency. Consistency is obviously a big one for me. If I can kind of uh, swirl that around the glass and then hopefully on the close-up, you will see if I can angle that right and we can get there. I don't know whether to stand to one side or that. Hopefully you'll see the fruits, the actual fruit content in the glass there. It's all sticking to the side. So that's a big difference. You get that consistency, better texture from this. But as I say, it's the fruit. These, you know, these are great. I love the syrups. I love all syrups, but I, I do quite love the flavor burst you get from a puree. And remember comparing this to something like Funkin, Funkin is, uh, virtually as near as damn it, 100% fruit. They're like 90, 95% fruit. So you do need to add sugar when you're making cocktails to balance them out anyway. These don't. So don't think for one minute that Funkin' is better because they haven't got added sugar. You're still adding sugar to your finished cocktails. The only difference is you can maybe add like a flavoured sugar to play about with the Funkin' stuff. But, you know, the shelf life of those after opening a week, seven days, 10 days, you know, maybe two weeks, maybe if you push it. These last for ages and ages. So for home consumers, these are perfect. And if you want another little cheeky tip, whack it on your toast. <laughs> I ain't joking, I'm serious. I have this on toast, this is amazing. So what are the red berries? There's a reason why I've got these two up here. Uh, blueberry, raspberry, I haven't got the other one, strawberry. This is a blend of strawberry, raspberry and blueberry. So riff number one, Obvious one to me, it was the first one that came to my head, the bramble. We all know the bramble is just gin, uh, lemon juice, uh, sugar, essentially, and creme de mure, the blackberry liqueur. You can use shambord, stuff like that. 
but this puree is a great, great kind of replacement for that. So really, really simple. Uh, we're gonna do a 50 ml double bubble of your gin of choice. I'm just using nice posh gin there, Citadel. Uh, 25 ml of lemon juice, freshly squeezed lemon juice, or you know, like what we've got, the ODK stuff lying around. And then the delicious, uh, I'm gonna use, I could try and use a different jigger for all this so we don't get messed up. Uh, but these delicious red berries uh, uh, puree here, and I'm going for 25 ml. Now it's worth noting for you guys having this, see what I mean, like little drippages. So it is worth having some sugar syrup on hand as well. Note these are 50% uh, fruit, 50% sugar, give or take. Um, so they have got a bit of sweetness in there, but sometimes you might just need a tiny little bit of sugar just to adjust to your own personal balance. I'm talking like five mil, if that. Just have that on hand. I don't think we're gonna need to. I've tasted this, this is amazing stuff. So good, hard, fast shake. 100% doesn't need any sugar for me. That is lovely. Has got that little bit of tart edge to it as well. It's not overly sweet. It's why I love these purees, they're great. Right, single strain into your highball glass. You could do this in a little Nicodora serve if you wanted to. Into your little rocks glass there. We're just gonna top it up with a bit of crushed ice. Makes our drinks look pretty. There we go. Crushed ice on top. And then just to garnish, we've got sprig of mint, obviously. Green and, uh, green and blue always goes well, green and sort of purple. And then a couple of blackberries. Easy riff on the bramble. Delicious, photo done, thumbnail done. That is perfect. Some of you may want a touch more sugar in there. I don't think so. I love that kind of berry tartness with the gin. Bramble, if I'm gonna drink gin cocktails, the bramble is gonna be one of my favorites. Now cocktail number two is a nice riff on the reggae rum punch. Couple of different ingredients here. Obviously the reggae rum, rum punch, sometimes strawberry liqueur, sometimes strawberry syrup, sometimes uh, grenadine. I thought that would be a nice kind of berry riff in there. And you'll notice I've got pineapple soda in there. I didn't have any pineapple juice. And I've got loads of pineapple soda here. So there's going to be a bit of pineapple soda coming out in a few of these cocktails. But it really does work well. Especially kind of riffing cocktails up as well. And you've got, you've got like different kinds of pineapple soda in supermarkets and all that kind of stuff. It's a great, great product to have around. So uh, we've got Uncle Ray coming out to play. It's the standard in the reggae rum punch. 45 mil of Uncle Ray. Big, overproof Jamaican sort of... Uh, Funk bomb of a rum, we like that. So 45 mil of Uncle Ray. There we go, in there. So 63% ABV, hoo hoo. Right, uh, let's go down the line this way. We're gonna do 15 mil of lime juice, freshly squeezed, or if you like me, uh, this stuff, we like this. Uh, 50 mil uh, orange juice, freshly squeezed orange juice I've got here. Okay, uh, I'll add, I'll top up with the, um, uh, the pineapple soda in a second. So that just leaves 25 mil of the Monin uh, red berry uh, puree here, or syrup. Le fruit, look at that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna ice that up, give it a good shake, uh, and then serve it up. There we go, good, hard, fast shake. I'm gonna top up now with uh, my pineapple soda. Uh, so I'm just gonna go about 50, about 50 ml pineapple soda. This is still lovely and vibrant pineapple flavor. So uh, it'll just be a little bit thinner, but add a little bit of, uh, fizz to your cocktail than the, the standard sort of reggae rum punch. So about 50 ml, that'll do, a bit more. There we go, there we do. We're gonna serve it up in a lovely kind of tiki glass. You can just do a shake and dump with this. If you fancy, there we go. Top it up, if you've got room, if it's just, it's just very, very slightly off the top there, top it up with a bit of crushed ice. And then as always with the uh, kind of tiki cocktails, I do love the whole contrast in colors. So I've got another sprig of mint and I've kind of got, there we go, a dehydrated pineapple as well. My riff on a reggae rum punch, the berry, berry reggae rum punch, how's that? I'm not gonna lie, that is amazing. The, the Ray Nephew obviously adds, if you know what Ray Nephew is, you know what that adds to a cocktail. So that adds that sort of Jamaican fire to that. But the berries, the berries with the juice and the fit. It is a, a lighter cocktail, if you like, because of that pineapple soda instead of pineapple juice. I really like that. That's a great little twist. So cocktail number three, we're going for a red berry julep. Now I always used, love to use this kind of julep. We have got another one on the back there. There's loads of different julep cups, but I always like to use this one because this one shows off exactly how uh, the julep should be served with the frosting effect. So really, really simple cocktail. Uh, whiskey of choice, bourbon, rye, scotch, Irish, whatever you fancy. Uh, this is 
good friend of mine, Hursty. Uh, so we're going for we're going for a 50 ml double bubble of uh, whiskey in there. Mint leaves, nice sort of fresh eight, 10 mint leaves, palm your hand, give them a spank. Don't need to do anything more than that, just to wake the aromas. And then we're going for, you guessed it, again, the same sort of thing, 25 ml of this red berry puree. Look at that, it's lovely. I'm just gonna sit here for a couple of minutes and let that all drip out. Now that is it for the ingredients, but the whole thing for the julep is plenty of crushed ice. And we're just gonna churn and blend all those ingredients together. So the mint really does come through the cocktail. And this is absolutely amazing, this. So you've got whiskey and mint. The julep is a big American kind of cocktail. Anyway, it's not massively popular in the UK for some reason. I don't know why, but in the US, it's a great drink. But the berries, berries and whiskey always goes well together. So which you can already see, this is why I love using this. You can already see all this uh, julep cup sort of frosting up. So after you've churned it for a kind of like a minute or so, you'll get that complete frosting effect. So give it a good churn. And then topping up with more crushed ice as you go along. And again, give it another little churn. That's what I mean. Can you see the frosting effect on a julep cup? That's what I absolutely love. That's why I always use this on kind of videos. Because it's a, although you kind of get the frosting on other julep cups, it's the stainless steel ones where they look really, really cool. So finish, finish churning that up. And then we're going to just finish it off, crown it with some more crushed ice there, just to make it look ni nice and pretty. Remember, Try not to touch the actual, uh, the julep cup there. Look at that frosting. And then sprig of mint to garnish, and I might steal those berries off the bramble there just for the photo. That is fantastic. It's properly booze forward. Don't think that, you, you know, this is a booze forward cocktail. It's just whiskey and a little bit of dilution, and obviously the mint and the berry. That's, that's all it is. But it worked with rum as well. I do love rum juleps. But the whole berry and whiskey thing in a cocktail does work exceptionally well. But look at the frosting on those julep cups. I love that. Right, cocktail four. It's not often I do this, but I'm going to go all slush puppy. And we're going to do the frozen uh, berry daiquiri. Of course, you know, you can pimp this up. You can add some liqueurs to this, like a berry liqueur, a uh, Giffard Frambois de Rance or something like that. But this is just keeping it to the absolute pure basics. I've just bought in um, one of the white rums that I don't use too often at home, Don Q Cristal. Decent kind of white rum. That's what you essentially want for this cocktail. Um, you could play about with maybe co coconut, coconut rum in here, coconut berry kind of frozen daiquiri if you like, but no, this is a frozen daiquiri. It's not a daiquiri, it's a frozen daiquiri slush puppy. So we're going for a 50 ml double bubble of your rum of choice. Uh, Nutribrill at this one. So this is proper blended. This is not a flash blender, a stick blender. This is proper blended, okay? So Nutribrill there. Uh, 25 ml of lime juice. And of course, this is ones where you kind of play with your ratios if you like. Uh, and I'm doing sort of like a, a 2 1 1 if you like for this. Uh, but again, have sugar on hand to kind of balance it out if you want to. I don't think you need to with this. Um, but it's up to you. Five mil sugar, maybe five mil of vanilla or berry sugar or, or something. It's, it's completely up to you. I don't personally need it, um, but that is down to you. So obviously crushed ice in there, good scoop of crushed ice, and we're just going to uh, blend it for like, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. We'll just see how we go until you get that lovely sort of slush puppy consistency. And that literally took like four or five seconds, if that. All right. So just keep an eye on it. You know, the, the more crushed ice you have, the quicker it's going to blend in there. But, you know, we've got, this should be just loose enough just to kind of, it'll probably dunk out in one go. Here we go. There it is. Look at that. But look, amazing. So for the thumbnail, again, I'm just going to do a lovely little sprig of mint in there, a couple of berries on top, and then we'll come back and taste it. There is something about a slush puppy. I don't often drink them. You know, you have to drink them quick before they start melting. But it's really delicious. It's booze forwards. It's going to give you brain chill, you know, for parties and that sort of stuff is absolutely amazing. Three ingredients, that's all they are. Add liqueur, add another touch of flavour, add some bitters. You go for your little lives, but berry, daiquiri, three berry, daiquiri, whatever you want to call it. And then cocktail five, I couldn't not do this, a mojito, a berry mojito. I just want to kind of give you inspiration of how you can riff up those famous cocktails. And mojitos, berry mojitos, just work fantastically well. Uh, notice I've got Monin's mojito syrup here. If you haven't got access to fresh mint, 
Uh, this, you can know, this is a kind of perfect syrup for this. I do firmly believe in this. You just need to very slightly play about with your lime ratio in here. Uh, I'm not going to bother using this I'm because I've got the mint here. I've brought in loads of mint for the cocktails there. But as I say, if you haven't, probably what I would do is about 25 mil of lime juice, maybe, maybe up in that to 30 mil of lime juice, and then 25 uh, maybe cut that back to 20 mil and then 10 mil of the mojito syrup. But play about with your own kind of ratios. That's what I say, everyone's palate is different. So, straight into a highball glass, uh, your double bubble of your white rum. And I have to say, even though I'm not a massive fan of these, of I, we call them um, moody daiquiris and, and moody mojitos, I'm not a massive fan of aged rum, like three, uh, sorry, like five, eight year old rum and a mojito. I know loads of people are. You play about, you enjoy that. I will say, berries and a slightly aged rum, hence the sort of whiskey vibes in that as well, do kind of work really, really well together. So you play with your own sort of thing in there. So uh, 25 mil of lime juice, and then I'm gonna equal that out with uh, 25 mil of um, my berry, Lefui, red berry Lefui, Monin's Puree, there we go. So. Just let that drip out there nicely for a couple of seconds. There we go. And if you're at home, you can always... I, I totally would. <laughs> I totally would. Right, uh, mint leaves. Uh, we should have a nice kind of... There we go. So sprig for the garnish. And that should... Hey, nearly. Uh, and kind of... We're going for about eight to ten mint leaves in there. Palm your hands. Give me a spank. There we go. Lovely. My little trick. Uh, soda water straight away. I've got crushed ice here as well. So soda water about there. No more than that. If you've got cubed ice, you probably want slightly more um, soda water, but play back. You don't want to over dilute it essentially. Right. One scoop of crushed ice just to get us going. Long bar spoon. Give it a quick churn. There you go. You're combining those ingredients. We're going to top up with more crushed ice and I think we can go right to the top straight away. There we go, right to the top, because we will bring, as we bring the spoon out, there we go, the mint will come up there, crown it with more crushed ice, Nug another sprig of mint for the garnish, remember the sprig of mint always goes beside the straw, so when you have a little sip, it's the mint that's going straight up your nostrils. That is absolutely delicious, so easy to drink, complete contrast, I think you've got five completely different tasting cocktails there, even though, you know, there's not too much difference between them, it's like the bramble, Let's be honest, the bramble and the daiquiri, they're just, you're just really swapping sort of lemon juice for lime juice and uh, rum for gin. But they all taste completely and utterly different. So don't forget, you've got a chance to win one of these. Um, submit your recipes to our Discord or tag us on Instagram using uh, recipes using your red berry puree. Uh, we'll make them up at the end of the month in I Make Your Cocktails. The winner gets a chance, well, the winner gets to pick a flavour of your choice. Don't forget to get involved in that. Get in the comments, let me know which one of these you, you fancy the most, which one are you going to kind of make up first. And if you want even more uh, red berry inspiration from the Cocktail Club, make sure you check out that video right there.